is a controversy which has pitted some NFL stars against their teams. How to handle concussions. Aaron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers today became the latest quarterback to suffer a concussion. He was injured when he was hit twice as he ran downfield. The NFL now requires each team to get a second opinion on concussion cases from an independent doctor. And the NFL Players Association has their own doctors ready to take a look if another opinion is needed. Joining us tonight is Dr. Dean Karahalios, the neurosurgeon assigned by the Players Association to the Chicago Bears. Doctor, why don't we start today with the Aaron Rodgers injury. Sure. If you were the Packers doctor, if you'd been assigned to them, what would your role be this evening? What role would you play in a case like that? Well, in this case, uh, he would be evaluated first and foremost by the NFL doctors uh, who would determine... Which is like the team doctors. The team doctors, exactly. And they would determine whether or not a concussion has occurred. And where we come in is sort of later in the process uh, when a decision needs to be made as to whether or not the player can go back to play or whether some sort of medical or surgical procedure needs to be performed. If there is some concern on the part of the player, uh, the player's agent or the NFL Players Association, uh, then that's where we come in and provide an independent medical evaluation, especially specialty evaluation uh, from one of our uh, specialists assigned to the various uh, teams, in this case the Packers team. So hypothetically, if, if somebody like Rogers says, I want to get back on the field, the team says, no, we don't think you're ready, then Rogers could ask the Players Association to bring you in for another opinion? That's correct. And exactly what do you tell the players in this situation? Uh, I mean, it must be hard to tell some of these guys, no, you're not ready to play. Yet. Absolutely, that's probably the most difficult part of this job. Uh, these are individuals who are highly motivated, who, who are aggressive and want to get back to play. Uh, they have a passion for the game. They've gotten to where they are because of that fire and that passion. You don't want to extinguish that, but at the same time, you want to do what's right for them medically and ethically. And uh, you try to be as objective as possible in conducting your, your examination. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you make the best call you could make and sometimes uh, it is concordant with that decision or that opinion that was provided by the NFL and sometimes it's at odds with the opinion from the NFL doctors and uh, really our job is just to be as objective as possible and do the right thing for the player. The Bears quarterback Jay Cutler had his own concussion earlier this year. Did you, any, right. did you play any role in that case and if not why not? Waiting in the wings. Uh, we never had the opportunity to see Jay uh, for an evaluation uh, and that was because really there was no, uh, no uh, controversy, if you will. Uh, it was deemed that he was uh, safe to go back. He had recovered from his concussion, and the uh, the doctors on the NFL side uh, felt comfortable with that decision. Jay felt comfortable with that decision, and uh, so he went back to play. And if Cutler doesn't, if, if you deem him ready to play now, is there still a chance, and I know some NFL, NFL players have experienced this, that even though he had the concussion this year, that at age 40, age 50, he could have after effects from that concussion? No question about it. Uh, we're now becoming more aware uh, that uh, what was felt to be previously a very trivial injury and concussion uh, may have some long-lasting effects. Uh, there have been studies that come, have come to light uh, looking at brain tissue from retired NFL players who have passed away and donated their tissues that have been studied uh, that have shown uh, damage that is far more profound than was, than was predicted uh, that would be seen. And can a single concussion cause that type of later damage? That, that, that's something that we don't know. That uh, is still being investigated. What we can say... So I think Aaron Rodgers has had two or three concussions now. Right, right. What we can say definitively is that a player is at very high risk for a permanent brain injury if they're allowed to play again and they sustain a second concussion before they've recovered from a first uh, concussion. So it's very important for us to, to, to assess them carefully, make sure they've recovered before we let them get back to play. You know, the NFL policy has been controversial if for no other reason than some very well-known players like Heinz Ward from the Pittsburgh Steelers have said they don't agree with it. Uh, Ward said, you know, this is football. You get your bell rung. I want to play next week. I don't care what the team says. Where do you fall on that dispute? Well, again, it's, it's very laudable. It's uh, his job as a football player, again, to, to want to get out there and, and play the game uh, to the best of his abilities. It is our job as, as physicians, whether we're on the NFL side or the NFL PA side, uh, to, again, look at this very objectively from a medical perspective uh, and to protect the players from further injury uh, and to protect their health. And you know, Chris Collinsworth, the uh, announcer, the former player, is, has become very outspoken saying the league has not done enough. Right. Uh, and he says, you know what, 
it's young players, high school kids, who watch these games on TV and they go home, they, they get the message, not from what they're told by doctors like you, but from what they see on TV. Is right. the NFL doing enough? Well, I, I think he's to be commended and lauded uh, for his, his uh, vocal efforts to, uh, to uh, call out what is a problem in the league. Uh, I will say that uh, it may be a bit unfair to place the blame squarely on the shoulders of the NFL. They've come a, a long way uh, and, and made great strides, certainly in the last year, in drug attention to this problem. Uh, they have created programs for players and coaches uh, to be trained in, in, in ways of avoiding these types of injuries. They've spent countless dollars in the millions in, in research to try to understand the mechanisms that underlie these injuries. Uh, they've worked tirelessly with uh, product manufacturers, manufacturers that produce So you think they've, the they've gotten the message? They've definitely gotten the message. We, we, we have a long way to go, uh, for sure. Let me put you on the spot real quickly sure. here. If you've got someone, a child, who's ready to play high school football or junior high school football and maybe go on to college football, would you allow your children to play football under the current circumstances? Uh, I, I would, and uh, I don't have boys uh, that would be playing football. I have daughters who uh, like uh, uh, to engage in sports that um, uh, may be associated with, with injuries at a higher rate than most, that they play lacrosse, and I encourage them to play. You can't live your life in a bubble. I think that what's reasonable is to, is to make the sports as safe as we possibly can. We can't eliminate all risk from sports, uh, uh, and certainly not the, con the contact sports like lacrosse, like football. And but finally, I know you told me what is the most dangerous sport for head injuries, and I was amazed. It's, it is amazing. People don't believe this when I give them the statistic, but the sport with the highest incidence of head injuries uh, is actually golf. Unbelievable. Okay. Right. Thanks very much, Zach. Thank you for having me.